Hello everybody, Max Wright here, joined by Megan Duma. Hi guys. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the next three steps that's critical for you to take if you're a small business owner, sole proprietor, even if you're an Uber driver or you know work in the gig economy. These are the steps that you need to take to get your hands on the billions of dollars being thrown around by the federal government to help uh, recover from the coronavirus, which pretty much every business has been affected of in one way or another. So this is gonna be, it's super important to be um, focused on this video, so I highly recommend get yourself a pen and paper, take lots of notes. This is gonna be a very detailed one, right? Uh, and so, um, yeah, let's get down to it. We're gonna talk about, oh, let's talk quickly about why this is important. Yep. Guys, there's a lot of uncertainty now. Is this coronavirus gonna, is the lockdown gonna go on for a few weeks, a few months? We're gonna be through this into the end of next winter? We don't know. And, and what I think is more important is, uh, even if you haven't felt the pain yet, it is trickling down very, very quickly. Essentially, the economy has just been blown up and we are in triage. And so I like to liken it to something like that. I don't mean to be dramatic or create more fear. That's the last thing I want. And that's why we're here is to actually help you with all the, that fear and anxiety uh, and to have actionable steps. But that is what ha what's happened. Yeah. Uh, it is April 6th as we sit here today. We are, we are working as fast as we can to get this information to you and keep you up to date. But let me give you some examples. Um, I have, I'm a real estate broker in addition to being a lawyer, I have multiple clients who own lots of single family residence properties. And two weeks ago, I talked to him and I said, hey, you need to start talking to your tenants because it's coming down the chute. Because when they stopped saying that you could evict people, as they did in the CARES Act, and they stopped saying that you could uh, foreclose on mortgages, well, people that did get hurt by coronavirus and people who did not all heard that same message loud and clear, which was, I don't need to pay mortgages and I don't need to pay rent. That's right. And there's some validity to that if you do it the right way. And I'm not telling you not to pay if you can, if you can do, but that's what people did. So one of my clients I talked to uh, yesterday, he didn't even look at his books until April 5th because that was when rent was technically late. And of his 100 single family residences, only 50% paid rent. And he anticipates that's going to fall to 25% next month. Yep. And so uh, there will be cascading effects going down the pike here from months and months and arguably years to come. And so what's highly, what the government desperately wants is to get money into people's hands so that they can carry on even though they're not working, so that they can keep industries alive. And so you can do your part by grabbing hold of that money. Okay, so we're here to help you navigate through that because our big concern is the top end of town, they can afford the lawyers and the accountants and the thousand dollar an hour people to help them navigate through all the bureaucracy and paperwork and getting this. The small business owners out there hustling, it's not their skill set, it's not what they like to do, and they're gonna leave a lot of money on the table without guidance. So this video is about helping you guys, small business owners, uh, sole traders, people out there with a side hustle, how do you go ahead and get your hands on the money that you're entitled to? And on that note, I also think it's important to address the fact that so many people are paralyzed by fear right now, and so they're not taking action. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to make this as simple as possible, so you know exactly what to do, you have actionable steps to take away after you've finished watching this video, and you're ready to do something to help yourself. So at the end of this, you're in the best position possible, and I guarantee you, you will have so much anxiety relieved. I know I have, I know my clients have, by following the steps we're about to talk to you about. Awesome. We can go ahead and give us a look at the next slide here. And let's talk about the action steps that we're recommending people take now. We've already talked about one very specifically in a previous video, which is at a very high level. Let's just do that in like two or three sentences. Go for it. Essentially, it's a way to get a $10,000 grant by following a simple link and it is forgivable. So they call it a loan that is a forgivable. That's called a grant where I come from. It's money, it's government giving you free money. That's step number one. Everybody with a side hustle, small business, sole proprietor, anything should go ahead and do that. Okay, well now let's get into the crux of this video. What are we gonna be talking about today? Uh, so there are three other steps that we're gonna be really talking about today. Number one is how to stop the bleeding in a legal, ethical, and I think moral way. Um, with the government mandating that evictions, you can't evict people and that um, you can't foreclose people. What does that look like? What does that mean for you and your business? And I want to get into I want to get into uh, three or four different uh, areas about rents, mortgages, loans, and utilities, and talk about uh, how to play it smart right now, so you keep as much cash as you can in your pocket. Right. But then how to pay for those things because we're not trying to get something for nothing. That's nobody should do that. How to pay for those things and then get that forgiven based on the next step. Right. Okay, so this next step, stop the bleeding, stop the reduce bleeding. our rents, uh, mortgages, loans, utilities, and other things that we can legally and ethically do. 
Next step, um, go for it. So the next step is, so when the government issued this great big $2. trillion package, right? Mm -hmm. It falls into two great big categories. One is called the Payroll Protection Program, and that is out right now. You can apply for that right now if you're a business. On April 10th, if you're a sole proprietor or a self-employed person or a contractor or a trade, you can apply for that April 10th. Um, so that's called the Payroll Protection Program, and we're gonna spend a lot of time in this video talking about that because it is uh, forgivable if you do it the right way. If you do it the right way, meet certain criteria, this loan also turns into a grant that you never have to come back. Again, it's the, it's the government desperately trying to give you the money so that you can bolster this economy and help out everybody else by employing people, continuing being a customer of other businesses and keeping the economy going. So you can do your government a favor by taking this money, spending it wisely, it becomes a grant, not a loan. The final step we're gonna talk about today. So the final step, I said that the SBA has two tiers essentially of what they money that they've allocated. There's other, there's a lot of other things in the CARES Act, but that's beyond the scope of this video. We're just doing the, the big things, right? So the PPP we'll talk about. The next thing we're gonna talk about is called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL as it's known. And so EIDL is basically gives business owners the sweetest loan at the best terms that I've ever seen in my career. Yeah. Um, and so it, but the reason the reason why we're talking about it and making it a, a very big part of this video is because everybody and their mom is talking about PPP. The banks make money on PPP. It's administered through your bank, your banks, your local banks, your big banks, whatever. Um, Idle is going to be administered through the SBA, and there are so many Just a government bureaucracy, a government bureaucracy, the Small Business Administration, a government bureaucracy. They, they are not going to go through banks. They might even set up satellite offices. We're hearing some rumors about that. But there's so much unknown with Idle and the terms are so sweet. It's just a great way that if you follow along and you know what you're doing, you can be one of these businesses that gets these great loans. And it, it's business changing and life changing, essentially. Sure. OK, so um, that's what you have to look forward to in this video. Let's recap for those of you who are just meeting us, uh, me briefly. So my name is Max Wright. Uh, I have been um, a, an investor, an entrepreneur for nearly two decades now. And uh, for the last several years, I have been talking about this exact crisis. Now, obviously not the corona. I didn't know corona was coming, but the corona was just a pin that popped the financial bubble. All bubbles find a pin. This one found not just a pin, but a shotgun in the coronavirus. And so we have two things happening right now. We have both a bubble popping in real estate, uh, the stock market, real estate's gonna hit, get hit very soon here too, uh, bonds and other areas, in addition to a whole shutdown of the economy. So we have just a perfect tsunami of economic craziness yeah. uh, going on right now. Um, and Megan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name's Megan Duma. I'm a lawyer, I'm a broker, uh, real estate investor. I do a little bit of everything. I'm also your ex-wife. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> mother of my gorgeous child. And uh, we obviously get on very well, so this is where you get great. Um, but we, uh, and something else that doesn't fit on a resume, but because I know Megan's special human talent is being, is out bureaucrating bureaucrats. So all these things, there's a good meaning politicians, but they are politicians and they all they know how to do is make paperwork and bureaucracy and make people jump through hoops. And I consider myself quite a smart person. I just, I, I, I can't do it. And I always got Megan to do it when we were together and she just, there was just incredible things what she would do. So as soon as this went down, I was calling Megan and I was like, hey, you, this is built for you. Uh, and you're like, yeah, no, I've just, I'm going through it because I'm doing it for myself. I was like, let's get the word out and teach people about this. So that's kind of how the, the nature of how this thing came about. Yeah, and honestly, my, my phone is ringing off the hook, not only for my clients, but friends. Anybody who knows me knows I'm in, I geek out on this stuff. So yes. um, I can't talk to everybody, I don't have time. And so this is my way to get it out there as best I can. And most importantly, no one can. Like the number of lawyers that are out there that are willing to go and deep dive on this stuff and they're not doing their other lawyer stuff, they're willing to go and learn all this stuff, the amount of people out there wanting that information, it just can't be done under the normal $500 an hour thing that lawyers charge and accountants charge. And so we wanted to get this out, um, combining our two skill sets to make this easy, digestible, useful information that you guys can use right now. Let me just interrupt you right there. Uh, I need to do somewhat of a legal disclaimer right here. I am not your lawyer. This is not legal advice. Um, you're not paying me $600 an hour and I do not know the individual facts of your case. It's really important that you understand that this is for educational purposes only. Yeah, the difference being if she's got the lawyer hat on, she is liable, she's an educator, 
it's a totally different thing. She's not liable for the information that she's sharing. Now, what you're doing is you're trying to give all the information um, as best as you know it right now today, but give us an indication of just how much flux is going on and how much things are changing. Literally, the way the law is written, um, I've looked over it, read most of it, not all 867 pages, but then the days and hours after it came out, they already are issuing advisory opinions that conflict with it. So this information will change. That is the most important thing that you need to know. We're painting in broad strokes, and I can tell you where the information has gone one way and then come back the other. I can tell you what I think is going to happen, but it's really, really important that you understand that we are in a cutting edge situation here where the government is trying to get money into the economy. They're trying to do the life support to get the money into the economy, and things are going to change as people finally loopholes as creative lawyers and people like us are teaching people different ways to do things. If the government doesn't like it, they can change it and they will change it. So that just needs to be said. Um, it's really important to stay up to date. If, if, and so yeah, I guess I can just leave it at that. Okay, well, let's go. Let's talk about the first thing though, that we want to talk about here because this is, um, yeah, we were talking about stop the bleeding. So take it. How can business owners or people of all kinds uh, work on this. Oh, so let's, let's. oh yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, so uh, this was something that hit me really quickly because I uh, had 10 Airbnbs in the Kansas City market. And as of March Madness, I had 50 cancellations in three days. Wow. And it was like, oh no, I've got loans, I've got uh, expendables, I've got utilities, the heat is still on. I mean, it was just like, whoa. Um, so not too far thereafter, these programs started coming down saying that landlords can't evict people, uh, part, of, part of the CARES Act, that banks can't foreclose on people, um, and their governor mandates that you no utility companies can turn off utilities during this time period. And so looking at my own books, I'm thinking I'm going to be insolvent, you know, if I don't if I don't do something. So I started looking into this and the first thing I looked into was mortgage forbearance for both myself and my clients. And that's a really hot buzzword. I, actually, funny story. I obviously have multiple loans. I'm a real estate investor, so I've got loans at big banks and loans at small banks and all, all different kinds of loans. Um, <laughs> as I'm having this like panic moment, which I'm sure all of us have been through and gone through, I'm like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? Um, Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage calls me and asks me not to pay. Really? They called me and asked me not to pay. They, well, they didn't ask me not to pay. They said, are you gonna have trouble paying because of coronavirus? And I said, well, hell yes I am. All my Airbnbs just got shut down. And they said, okay, immediate forbearance. <laughs> and literally it was a two, two click step and I was there. Um, and so that I, I then started to reach out to my banks on that. So let me interrupt you. Forbearance is a technical term. True. What does that mean? So it's term. not it's not forgiveness. Forbearance is not forgiveness. It just means that you don't have to pay now. You do have to pay later. It doesn't mean you don't get charged interest on what you're not paying now. You are. They're really the banks. So slow down. What this means is you can stop paying your mortgage right now. It doesn't affect your credit rating. You're not going to get foreclosed on. No one's going to write you nasty letters and say stop paying. You're going to get kicked out of your house. You're not going to lose the equity in your house. It means we understand the situation. You can stop paying your mortgage bills right now. We'll figure out a way to deal with it later. This is by agreement with your bank. This is by contract with your bank. This is a contract modification to your loan, essentially. Yes. And so something you, to consider is the government is probably going to take care of the banks, so the banks don't lose. So they're more than happy to deal with you. That's right. And they they just don't want to see mass people just you know half of this country's mortgages is just going belly up. That's right. So that's what they're trying to do. So the government's going to take care of the banks. The banks are trying to take care of you in that anecdote you just shared. The banks are even proactively calling people saying, hey, can, do you need forbearance? Um, so, But if they're not doing that for you, you can call your bank and do stuff. So take it away. But what I don't recommend is just stop paying and don't talk to your bank. That's not okay. Uh, this has to be by agreement. Sure. And don't stop paying your mortgage. I'm going to repeat that. Don't stop paying your mortgage. Um, only do so if you are legitimately affected by the coronavirus, you need help, and your bank agrees to it. Those are the three things that I'm going to say right there. Now, I want to talk about two different kinds of forbearance because I've seen a lot on social media um, mortgage brokers and lenders and real estate professionals saying, oh, don't go into forbearance. X, Y, and Z will happen. It'll be so bad. And I'm kind of calling bullshit on that in a way. Um, yes, you do have to pay back forbearance, but the banks have kind of gone one of two ways. They either have, you have to pay back the entire amount um, directly after the forbearance period with this big caveat. And this big caveat is, unless you can't. And then if you can't, then we'll roll it into your other monthly payments or we'll do a loan modification. Okay, so let's slow that down. 
So what they're saying is, and they usually write things so the, the cards are they, they hold all the cards and can choose to do what they want. But what they're saying is, you can stop paying for let's say six months. At the end of that six months, you owe the entire six months back. That's right. However, in practice, you don't believe that's how it's going to go down. Uh, the literature that or the agreements that uh, for Quicken Loans, for example, say we understand that you might be kind of not be able to do that at the end of six months, and if you can't, then there's going to be other avenues for you. Um, One so. of the ways is to take those six payments and tack them onto the end of the mortgage. Another way would be to distribute those missing six payments throughout the next 24 months or something. So there will be, maybe you know, so your your mortgage payment will go up, you know, 10% or something for the next two years to make up for it, something like this. So that's what it's looking like it is going to be. Yes. And again, this is all by um, negotiation with your bank. Right. That's your, why. Your lender. That's why. So immediate action step number one: call your mortgage people, call your lenders, start talking to your banks, and get um, get what you need from them. Okay. That's more. Oh, quickly. Residential mortgages, commercial mortgages, all the same. Well, well, we'll get into that. Right now, I'm kind of talking more about your primary residence or like mortgages that you have on your house, okay. um, or maybe on your business. Okay, what about for you, for example, I mean, a number of real estate, a number of single family homes? Before we go there, I just wanted to say one more thing about forbearance. I'm go sorry. For it. Go for it. There was the forbearance that I just talked about that the real estate professionals are all warning against, like, don't stop paying because if you're in forbearance, you're totally screwed. I don't buy it. Um, but the other type of forbearance that's being offered is literally just to tack it on the back of your loan. And that's beautiful yeah. because it's like, oh, I get three months not having to pay and my bank agreed to it. So I'm not violating any duties and I need the help. Awesome. And then I get to pay for it and you know. 30 years time from now, an extra three years. This was right. a 30 year loan, an extra three months. That's right. Cool. So uh, push your bank for the second kind, especially if you have mortgages with small banks or things like that. The big banks aren't really gonna negotiate. They have their two in their process about everything. And it's like, if you don't just do what their process is, and that's typical with big banks. But if you have your mortgages with small banks, talk to them about the kind of forbearance where it gets tacked on at the end. Um, they're still getting paid and you get the break and they're helping you and you just love them. I'm, I'm a small bank lover and okay. a big bank hater. All right, next slide, let's say it. Okay, um, now we're getting into what you were asking me about. Okay, go for it. On the loans. So of course, as real estate professionals or business owners, you may have loans or lines of credit or things like that. Um, so I do not trust, even though I do love my small banks, I don't necessarily trust them. So Or, or any bank. <laughs> or any bank, that's what I mean. Um, the first thing that I think you should do if you can afford to do it is if you have a line of credit, which gives you access to a, a load of cash, you should drain that line of credit and get it out of the bank that holds the note. So for example, if you have a, a million dollar line of credit or a hundred thousand dollar line of credit, um, you you don't just leave that money in your line of credit there because they can say, oh, your businesses have downturn. Guess what happened to your line of credit? We took it away. Adios. Right. So get that money out, open a bank account with a different bank where that the bank that holds your line of credit can't touch it. And you're going to be paying interest in that line of credit, but that's okay because interest is covered in a lot of these loans we're going to talk about. But that way your cash is safe and you're not at the... Uh, the mercy? The, thank you. The mercy of the bank. The other thing is your negotiating position when they do try to call your line of credit is much stronger if they don't have the cash. So if they if they have all my money, let's say a bank account or in the line of credit or whatever. Because, because, you, because we are... Everyone who has a line of credit, you're incentivized to keep as much cash in your line of credit because it reduces your amount of interest that you have to pay each month. Right. But what we're saying in times like this, it may be worth it to pay the interest and get the money the hell out because their decision to say, oh, we changed the line of credit, we're just going to, we gave you a million dollars, but dropping that to $100,000, uh, that can happen like that. And it did happen in 2008 with home equity lines of credit. I mean, it's literally one of my closest um, banker friends <laughs> uh, talked to me about this. And yeah. we set the strategy up together and I um, employed it for my clients. And you got to still still pay your loans. You know, if you, you got to be able to pay your pay your interest. Don't don't try to screw the bank. Don't try to screw anybody. You got to be able to pay your interest. But you got to also protect your cash because we don't know what's happening. Okay. So that's my first thing. Get the money out of the bank that holds your line of credit. So here's what they're doing for on these commercial loans to rework the line of credit. And it's kind of lip service. It's kind of, again, bullshit. Like they're saying, okay, we're just going to do interest only loans. And these were like basically interest only loans anyways. So they're, they're taking out that small amount of principal that you may have been paying amortized over 20 years on a five year note or something like that. It's going to save you a couple hundred bucks. Thanks a lot. It's not going to be enough to stop the hemorrhaging. And they're also saying, oh, we're not going to collect uh, taxes and insurance. 
Well, okay, everybody knows that taxes, well, maybe you don't, I don't know. Uh, taxes and insurance are collected the year before they're actually paid. So they're like, oh, we're not gonna collect the taxes and insurance that's gonna be due in 2021. You still have to pay it. Yeah. You still have to have your house insured in case it burns down. And, and you still yeah. have to pay taxes. You know, you know, they're getting their money. Your property tax. Yep. Your property tax. So um, that's really just lip service and kind of BS. So yeah. we're not seeing really good reworking terms um, right now on the commercial loans. Um, but my best advice is get your cash away from them. If they have exposure to you and they don't, they start not feeling comfortable. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. And here's my prediction, and it's just a prediction. But I know what the, what my anecdotal stories are from my business and my clients about who's paying rent and who's not. Um, come, you know, mortgages aren't due until the 15th of the month. So on April 15th, we all love that day, anyways. Not, um, we're gonna see what's really happening with the mortgages. Okay, cool. And so that's when banks are gonna freak out and start doing weird stuff. Gotcha. Okay, rents. Now this kind of is something that I want to talk about. You could be either a landlord and not getting your rents, or you could be a tenant and not be able to pay your rents, be it for your business or personally or whatever. Now, as I told you, evictions are halted, so you can't get kicked out of your house. That's that's, that's the, for the entire U.S. You cannot be evicted. You, that's entire, a federal rule. That's a federal rule under CARES Act. Okay. You yes. cannot get evicted. Uh, you cannot be foreclosed on. Yes, that is true. Uh, that's just residential. Just residential. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so let, I wanna speak from your perspective as a tenant first. So if you're a tenant and let's say you have, um, it's kind of the same thing that I'm saying with the mortgage people, talk to your landlords. Like, let them know what's happening. Let them know that you've applied for these loans and they'll get paid back. Let them know that you're, you're being proactive. And the phone call that I love, or how I kind of coach people through this, is call them up and say, hey, uh, I've been hit hard and I'm trying to be proactive to take care of you, uh, but I need some assistance. And we're seeing really, really good results with that. Um, but at the end of the day, they can't kick you out, but you still shouldn't not pay your rent if you can pay your rent. Um, on the commercial side, same thing, negotiate. I had a client call me and say, I can't, my rent's $13,000 a month for the warehouse. There's no way I can do this. Mm -hmm. I said, dude, call your landlord and tell them that your business got hit super hard by Corona, uh, which it did, and see what he'll do. And so she proposed um, six months at half the rent. He said, whoa, no, I can't do six months at half rent, but I can do three. And he agreed within two minutes. So she put another $6,500 a month in her pocket, not having to pay it back, just totally rent changed based on a phone call. Nice. So, so, this is so another, three times six, 6,500, we're talking $20,000 saved in a two minute phone call. Yeah. That's uh, critically important, guys. Like this is the kind of stuff that is going on. If you're sitting there in fear, you're hiding from people, you're hiding from your creditors, forget about that mentality. They're probably getting grants that are covering themselves if you don't pay. They're in a position to help you. They want to see you stay rather than be empty because no one's renting warehouses right now. So get on the phone with anybody you owe money and start renegotiating. And it's just incredible the deals you can make. Yeah, I mean, acting despite fear. That's the big message. Like Acting despite fear, I love it. It is, because I, I know I was there for a week. I just didn't know what the hell to do. I mean, so my MO is just to dive into what's coming. This was before CARES was enacted, and nobody knew what the hell was going on. And so that was really a bad place to be. But as soon as I got a hold of this and was able to chew on it, I just, like, it, it makes me feel so much more comfortable and I'm able to sleep at night because I have done all these things that I'm telling you to do. My clients have done all these things that I'm telling you to do. Okay, let's keep it moving. Sorry. Okay, utilities, same thing. Most governors have issued a mandate across the state. Uh, they can't turn off your gas. They can't turn off your electric. They can't turn off your water. Check and see if your state's one of those. It probably is. Um, here's my thing on that. If you can't pay it, then you're not going to get shut off. So you're going to be okay. I mean... The utility huh. companies have us by the something. Short and curly? There you go. <laughs> because if you don't pay, what happens? You're in the dark. Yeah. You got cold water. Like, you have no water at all. Like, you pay your utilities because you got to pay your utilities. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in a situation where they, they are on, uh, on disc, no, no disconnection orders. So, um, I'm not saying don't repay it. We're going to teach you how to get the loans to repay it. I'm just saying this is what's happening. You need to know about it. Nobody else is going to be taking out Facebook ads and telling you this because the utility companies don't want you to know this. And uh, yeah, nobody really wants you to have this information. Yeah. But mm. it's true. Gotcha. 
Okay. So this is the so, end so of the stop the bleeding. Kind of, yeah, that winds up. Let's stop the bleeding. It's good ways to stop the bleeding. Now let's talk about the payment, uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Several different sides of it. Grant money and loan money. Let's get into it. Okay, so when you start thinking about the Payroll Protection Program, I want to be really clear. It only covers an eight-week period, okay? It only covers an eight-week period. So I want to slow you down, too. For, for the remainder of this video, there's two big programs that we're going to talk about. They are just completely separated, which have different rules and different everything. So with that mindset, I want you to remember, we are wearing the PPP um, hat right now. All the questions we're going to talk about for the next little bit regarding that program and that program alone do not apply to other things. Yes. Take okay. It, take it away. So the PPP program is intended to basically stop the bleeding for these eight weeks uh, that after the loan is issued so people can stay employed. Um, it is for payroll, 75% is for payroll expenses, 25% is for um, mortgage interest, insurance, other uh, qualified expenses, which we'll get into. Here's why that is important. If you take this loan and you pay what they are asking you to pay. You only use it to pay what they ask you to, what these, these defined things. Yes, and during this eight week time period, then you can apply and this loan is forgiven. Meaning it becomes a grant and a loan, you never have to pay it back. Right. What's, so we'll, let's, let's dive into it a little bit deeper. That's the cool thing about it. Now let's pretend for a minute that it really is a loan, okay? Uh, let's start there. The loan amount is going to be your payroll expenses times 2.5%. Um, I'm sorry, your payroll expenses times 2.5. That covers two months and the 0.5 is for the other stuff. Does that make sense? Okay, so okay, so this is a little formula here you've created to help us understand exactly how much money we can get. And this can be turned into grant. So if, if it's your payroll, and what you may or may not realize is that if you're a sole operator, you're working at home, you are paying yourself in one way or another. Um, if you're an Uber driver, if you're whatever, you can take whatever profits you make from your business, that can come to you as salary and payroll. Even if you haven't been doing that previously, you can do that in the future. And we'll talk about that at the end when it comes to strategy and working with your accountant to make all this stuff happen. So if this is payroll, right, two and a half times your payroll, your monthly payroll, that is how much money you can go ahead and, and this can be turned into um, a free gift from the government. Yes. Um, okay, so if we pretended it was a loan, let's just get those terms out of the way really quick. Um, it, the loan amount is 0.5% interest, okay? And you don't have to pay for six months, okay? But you do have to pay it back within two years. Now that's, that, it only turns into that loan if you get this money and you say, oh, screw it, I'm gonna go buy a boat. Right. You know what I mean? Right, you have to use it for the way in which they encourage you to use it. For it to be a grant. It's still a sweet ass loan at 0.5%. <laughs> like, Agreed. even if you, I mean, don't go buy a boat, but even if you went and bought a boat, it's, it's best boat terms ever. It's the best boat terms ever. Yeah, sure. exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it's forgiven if you pay your cover, your payroll costs, your mortgage interest, your rents, your utilities, all those things that we just stopped the bleeding on. Now we're going to get that money to go pay those things, which is pretty cool. Yes. Okay. So let's let's. So let's talk about this. So this particular program, um, the, at present, it's earmarked for three hundred and fifty billion dollars. The government is desperately trying to give to small businesses. Expectations? Do we think this is going up? There were talks. There were talks today um, in the Senate and the House about another trillion dollar stimulus bill. It didn't necessarily cover the same things. They are talking about small business. It depends on how bad it gets. Yeah. So one way or another, I think this is going to go up. That's me. This is not. This is not Megan speaking. This is me speaking. I think this money is going up. However, don't risk it. Get into these programs and apply for them as quickly as possible. So let's go through this. There's a cap of ten million dollars per business. Okay, the, the other on the low end. If you are a sole proprietor, just a one-man band doing something, a side hustle or something, and you can even be a W two employee with a side hustle, correct? Yes. If you have a side hustle and up, this can be worth up to twenty, nearly twenty-one thousand dollars just for you as a grant, not the loan portion, the grant portion. We'll talk about that why um, in just here a minute. Very important. This loan has no collateral, um, no personal guarantees or fees. They haven't got time to go through the normal loan process. So it's show up and look pretty and here have some money. Now they were trying to, when they rolled it out, they're trying to say that they're going to have one day approvals. Um, mine was in on April 3rd and I do not have approval yet. So uh, that's again, nobody knows and it changes daily. So we'll see. They have up to 60 days to approve you, which is, would create massive chaos for a loan that's supposed to be 
very streamlined. However, there are droves of business owners. If you uh, were to Google PPP, which I did this morning, uh, the top headlines are Wells Fargo has reached its cap. Bank of America had 160,000 applications in one day. Um, I mean, th and this is this is for the people that could apply April 3rd. There's a whole nother group of people that is the self-employed and the sole proprietors and the contractors and the trades that can begin applying April 10th. Um, and that's gonna be a whole nother tsunami of folks that mm -hmm. are hitting these banks. Yep. So we're gonna talk strategy on how to make sure that you don't get lost in the tsunami or you, the money doesn't run out before you get your application in, yep. um, in, in just a minute. So let's talk about the things that you can spend it on to maximize the amount of money that can be forgiven. Uh, and so, so go take it from there. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so 75%, like I said. And I can get to start here for me. Okay, like I said, it can be used to be covered, we kind of went over this already, but payroll cost, mortgages, rents, um, utilities, uh, just those types of things. So we need to define what payroll is, which we'll do in a minute. We'll do that in a minute, yes. Now does it cover things like your credit card bill? Does it cover things like other things that you need to keep your business going? Or is it specifically no, these things? it's specifically these So it's, very, it's limited to basically these four things. Your payroll costs, we'll expand on that in a minute. Your mortgage interest only. So this is the mortgage interest on the business if the business owns the premises. There is conflicting um, there is conflicting language as to whether it's mortgage and principal or just mortgage interest. Okay. The law itself says mortgage payments, but the clarifications have said mortgage interest. So okay, so we we'll, we have to check and see on that one. If your business pays rent, that uh, that is that is covered, and utility costs. So that's it. And it's for this for an eight week period. Well, there there's a couple more things that are that might be very well worth mentioning, and that's um, healthcare benefits and retirement benefits. If you paid yourself retirement benefits in the past, that counts. You can pay yourself retirement benefits to the same tune, amortized over or not amortized, but split up over twelve months f per month during this time period. During this eight week period. Yes. Now the purpose of this grant is so that you do, that it's primary reason, it's called the Paycheck Protection Program. It's primary reason is to keep people employed. What they want you to do is to um, employ, don't fire people. Now, we're already several weeks into this crisis, even months, you may have already f fired people. Are you, are you dead in the water if you've already fired people? You're not, you have until June 30th to hire these people back. Um, and you can start paying them from whatever time you hire them back, but you have until June 30th of 2020. So there's a couple things here. If, um, if you, so if you have fired people, you can hire them back or at least attempt to hire them back. There's not clear language on that. If you go to hire someone back and they say, no, I don't want the job anymore, you, it doesn't mean you're, maybe by the letter of the law, you are not entitled to the grant, but the language hasn't been written. You're pretty confident that if you have a good faith attempt and you document that attempt to rehire workers and some say no, you will still be okay. There's another, you think, best case, best guess. I do, and that's just going on basically the spirit of the law and trying, you know, what it, what is it intended for? Are you trying to meet that intention? You know, just yes. looking at it more from a common sense perspective. There's another caveat here. You, it is, we, they do understand there's tougher times and some people may have reduced paychecks. You can reduce paychecks up to 25%. That's right, 25%. Yeah, so if, I, if it were me, I would use both the uh, either I have to, I would reduce payroll by no more than 25% from the pre-coronavirus issue. If that means some people don't want to come back to work and I have to pay everybody full rate, so be it. If everyone comes back to work and I can drop it by 25%, I would do that. But I would keep that net figure above 75% of what payroll costs were pre-coronavirus. Uh, and another critically important thing from this grant, um, usually if you have a loan, and then you, you can't pay it back and you just don't, you, you, you never pay it back. You have to declare that as income and pay tax on it. With this particular program, if this loan is declared a grant, it will be tax free. So for, at the bare minimum, to repeat something we said earlier, for the, uh, a sole proprietor, we're talking about nearly $21,000 free grant money um, tax free. That's assuming they were making $100,000 where this where this is capped at per employee. So that's an important that's an important component. If you're an Uber driver and you're making $20,000 for the last 2 years and right up until corona hit and now you're making zero, you you don't get to pay yourself now $100,000. That right. doesn't that doesn't fly. So let's go to the next slide. I think we talked about that a little bit. Okay. This is we already covered that. Um, 75% yeah. is, pay, is payroll, 25% is the other costs. Yes. When you go to turn this money into a grant, what you go, you're trying to find as many payroll costs as you can. We'll explain that in a minute. 
that can account for three quarters of what you're applying for. Another 25% max can be used for the utilities, the rent, the mortgage interest, the other things that we talked about. Right. Go for it. Okay. And again, something, a point I want to make on this is uh, I, th I see this loan hitting home so hardcore for restaurant owners, retailers, um, anybody who literally has had to shut their doors, bars. Uh, if you're on, if you're watching this right now, you need to share this. If you know a restaurant owner, you know a retailer, a cupcake shop, whatever, because not not only is hiring these people back going to be forgiven and good for these people that supported these people's business, but it also raises the multiplier for the business owner, raises the 2.5 uh, times so they can use more money to pay their mortgages and their utilities and the things that it's all going to be forgiven. It's all going to be forgiven if you do it right. So. If it is, you want to hire as many people back as possible. You want to get these numbers up as high as possible. You don't want to be like, oh, you know, I'm, I had 10 employees, but I'm only going to hire back two because they're the only ones I really liked. No, hire back all 10, pay them for two months, and get that multiplier up because yes. that means you helped 10 people that need it and you have more money to spend on the other 25% costs. Yes, and quickly, administratively, the smart way to do this, open a new account. Uh, it's in, under, your, under your business name and when you pay those bills, pay all, all the things that are going to be um, forgiven, pay all those bills from that one account. That way you've got a really easy bookkeeping thing at the end. All this money, I want that turned into a grant, not a loan. Exactly. Next exactly. slide, we've got to get moving along. Sorry. Okay, so what is payroll? That's like how we get this number up and what is it? It's you, number one, it is you, so pay yourself. Um, if you haven't paid yourself in the past, that's, you probably don't qualify. But most business owners have paid themselves. Yes, and in we'll, one and we'll, way or another. And we'll talk because this is going to go on 2019 or 2018 uh, tax returns. Right. We're going to talk about strategy. Most people have not submitted their 2019 tax returns yet, and if you have, you can go back and uh, change them. So we, we'll, we we may have time to talk about strategy here at the end, how to work with your accountant to maximize these numbers instead of paying yourself dividends and salary. Maybe pay yourself all salary. There's smart things you can do. We'll come to that. That's right. Um, so you are capped, every employee, including yourself, is capped at $100,000. So if you were making $50,000 last year, not smart idea to try to give yourself $100,000 this year and take it on that basis. That's a fraud and we don't recommend it. If you have employees earning $200,000, you only get to have this grant turned up for up to $100,000 of their um, income annualized. But remember, this program is for an eight week period. So even though it's a $100,000 salary person, it's for eight weeks of their pay. Okay, so and again, while we're going through this, this is another time, a good action step to literally write down, like think about who all your employees are, who is on payroll, write these notes down because you want to be thinking about these numbers. I was in such a frenzy, even me, I was like the first time I went to, to do this application, I massively undervalued how much I was actually spending on payroll expenses. Sure. So you gotta capture this. This is gonna be a make or break for you. So what are these payroll, tech, payroll okay. expenses? Yep. So that pays for vacation, um, parental leave, family leave, medical or sick leave. We're gonna talk more about that and when to spend that money um, in a minute. Uh, salary, wages, commissions, tips, and state and local taxes assessed on compensation. So tips, like uh, this Paycheck Protection Program is for, like it's for a lot of people, but it's perfect for the restaurant business, okay. the bar business, anybody who made tips, um, maybe golf clubs if they're not still open, I don't know. Uh, but wh who's making tips? Who do you tip in this environment? Service industry. S service industry. That's a huge sector of our economy. And these people can get paid eight weeks and it's forgiven by the government. Let's get them paid, let's do it. You guys are business owners, figure it out, let's do it. Does it include contractors? It does not. So here's a big thing. When it, now, the letter of the law, as it reads, includes contractors this is one of those things where five days later they came back and said oh here's an advisory opinion does not include contractors but they said here's why and it makes sense because the contractors can apply for themselves so if you're a plumber if you're an electrician if you're a lawyer if you're a whatever if you're a contractor of any sort you can apply for yourself April 10th and you should yes let's go Okay, so this now this is a huge, huge gold nugget, guys. Get your pen and paper. Write this down. This is going to be just basically free money for almost everybody. So as part of PPP, they said businesses now have to give employees um, sick leave and family leave. But if you do it, we will pay you back in a tax credit, meaning that in 2021, you're going to get this money back. 
dollar for dollar. Yeah. Um, and if you, you know, the, the government will even write you a check for it if necessary. So yep. you will get this money back, either in tax, legitimate tax savings or the government will write you a check back for it. And here's the deal. So sick leave. So just stop, hang on a second. This is for all of your employees. If they have to take time off for, for sick leave for corona, this is here to help them. You, they want you to still pay them and the government will take care of you later. Here's the catch. Again, if you're a small, you've got a side hustle or whatever, you may not realize it, you are your own employee. So you can pay yourself sick leave to stay at home and not work during this period. That's correct. So here's the deal on that. You don't want to pay more than the tax credit's going to give you unless you just want to do it out of the generosity of your own heart. Um, but who? what does sick leave mean for this legislation? It means anybody who was on COVID isolation orders, uh, anybody who was advised by medical staff to stay home because of COVID, and anyone with COVID symptoms and seeking diagnosis. So that's pretty broad again. It's very broad. If you are smart to protect yourself, if you go to a doctor to, to get a test or to get a COVID test, keep that receipt. That's your proof that you were you had symptoms and you sought uh, diagnosis. So how much money can they can they get? So yeah, it's a uh, 80 hours or two weeks and it's up to five thousand dollars. okay? So this is the sick portion. So you get your, you get two weeks of sick pay, which cannot be more than five hundred and eleven dollars per day. And it caps at five thousand dollars. Yep. Okay. Yep. We clear there. Yes. And so again, this is for yourself and for every one of your employees. So it's five thousand dollars per employee. Yes. Okay. Again, the cash flow issue. You have to pay yourself or your employees now. You get this money as a tax credit next year, which is interesting. How long it takes to actually get that back? Because for a lot of businesses, there won't be profits this year or next year, and so it might take several years to get this ten thousand, this five thousand dollar tax credit back. Well, no, because the government will still write you a check. Like, so you don't have to necessarily have a profit. Like, so if, you ha if you're taking a loss in 2021 um, and you have this tax credit, you're not going to have a tax liability necessarily. That's right. And, and so... So how do you get to use your tax credit if you don't have a tax liability? You can apply it against what you owe the government and they pay you. Yeah, but if you don't owe the government anything... Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. At the end yeah, of this yeah, year, yeah. there'll be a lot of businesses that don't make profit. Right. Who have zero tax obligation. Right. So your tax credit can't be used. It can be used in future years, but not then. So it just goes to create a cash flow issue that you should be aware of. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so this is very similar. Uh, this is for family leave. So anybody who's impacted by the coronavirus and needs to take care of somebody who is sick because... Of they have the coronavirus, uh, taking care of a quarantine person. If your child's daycare or school has shut down and you have to take care of your kid and stay home from work, this applies. So basically every parent so, in America. So this is called the family leave tax credit. So again, this is for businesses to pay their employees to stay at home and not work if they have to take care of a sick one or uh, for family care. Yep. Go for it. And it's very similar to what we just talked about. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it other than this is $200 a day for up to 50 days is 10 weeks, okay? So, but it maxes out at $10,000. Mm -hmm. And this applies to you as well. Uh, so, or maybe maybe your spouse, if your kids have to stay home and you run your business and you have to stay home with your kids, you can pay yourself this. You can pay yourself to stay home with your kids and the government will issue you a tax credit. That's right. So between the previous one, which was max $5,000, this one max $10,000, that's $15,000 in tax credits going to you. Um, to basically stay at home and do nothing during this time. Well, take care of your kids in this instance. Right, but an important note here, so just on timing on things, um, what, I, what I like to start kind of talking about the strategy and how we're spending this money, because it's important, if you get the $10,000 that we talked about as a step one, um, mm -hmm. way back in the beginning, Use that now. Use it for use it for payables. Use it for your mortgage. Use it for your utilities. Use, use it for whatever you need right this second. Once you get PPP, spend it on those things that we discussed, those four things that we discussed, okay? When PPP runs out in eight weeks, then start looking at this uh, vacation and, yep. and sick leave, okay? That's going to be your next thing that you pay yourself, mm -hmm. all right? And then we're going to get into the big daddy that I'm super excited about, and that's idle. Great. But I let's... Think, let's uh, I think we might have a slide or two more on this, or maybe it's done. Uh, we kind of covered this. The the 75% the of the stuff that is um, forgivable has to be payroll related. The other 25% is your mortgage interest, your rent, your utilities, all of these things that's important. You can't go and get a, buy a mortgage now and think it's going to be forgivable. It's not. All of these things have to be in place before February 15th. Yeah, and that's pretty easy for everyone to prove. Don't try to mess around with that one at all because it just is what it is. 
Okay, so key dates. This is why we are rushing so much to get this information to you. The um, opening application period for small businesses uh, is April th was April 3rd, 2020. Okay, so there have been just a tsunami of people applying um, and that date has already come. It doesn't mean you can't still apply. You can, uh, that you're just gonna be in line. So get in line now. Um, the second date that's really important is April 10th, where the independent contractors and the self-employed individuals can begin to apply, uh, and we'll see another wave then. Um, so how to apply. This is really important, okay, guys? And I would even scratch off Bank of America because they did... So you do not have to have a bank account at any bank, bank, you, apply. Any bank you apply at. You do not. Um, my recommendation is if you have a relationship with a small bank, meaning you've banked with them before, you have checking accounts there, and they have a, a SBA loan department, go to them first. They're gonna be the best people to work with. If you're Joe Schmo off the street and you roll up to Chase Bank or Bank of America, uh, you're gonna be in a queue that is so long that you may not make it. So even if, even if you don't have a relationship with a small bank, start there. So Bank of America said today that, um, well, when they rolled theirs out, was it yesterday or Monday? So when they rolled theirs out on Monday, because some banks don't even have their stuff together yet. They're mm -hmm. not even accepting applications. Yeah. But Bank of America rolled theirs out and they said, we're only gonna service these loans for people that have accounts, pre-existing accounts with us. Right. So you can't even go open an account and hope for a loan. Right. And then they, they backed off of that and they said, okay, well, we're just gonna give priority to those who had pre-existing accounts with us. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, fair enough, I guess. Oh. But it's again, the government's giving the money and the bank's mucking the terms up. Yeah. You know. Okay. So Moving along. important there, go to your small bank, go to your local bank. They're gonna be better to work with. Um, most likely than the big banks. Yeah. That's my advice. Okay, so then how do I get my loan forgiven? So now you've gotten this loan, you've gotten through the process, you've gotten the loan, it's in your bank, you use it for the things that we've taught you to use it for, okay? Once you've done that, and you do it, like Max said, in a separate bank account, so it's just real clear, you just get to print off your statements for these two months and hand it in, here's what you do. You submit a request to your lender with your nice squeaky clean bank statements that say, look, I'm a good little girl or boy, I did exactly what you asked me to do, I'd like this loan forgiven and then your servicer will analyze it and forgive, forgive the loan. Okay, you must certify the documents are true. Um, and the lender must make this decision on forgiveness within 40 day, 60 days. Yeah. Are they gonna have the manpower to do this? I can't imagine they will, which means I think they're gonna be just like, you get a car, you get a car, everybody gets a car. Well, I wouldn't bet on it uh, because who knows who's going to come look at it after the fact. So. Yeah, definitely don't lie on a form going to the bank for a government program. If you get caught, big troubles. So definitely do not do those kinds of things. Yeah. But what I'm saying is they, the, yeah, the lender has to make this decision of the current legislation, but this stuff changes all the time, whether or not it's forgiven within 60 days of your application. Of That's an application of the forgiveness, that's not right. application of the loan. That's right. And that well, it's actually be, both. That could be a tsunami of um, uh, uh, of stuff. So I, I'm thinking pretty much everyone's going to get it as long as you tell the truth on it. You're going to get it. You have to spend the money first before you make the application. Is, is yep. my only advice there. Yeah. And have the clean account. Okay. So paycheck protection program wrapped up. Is that right? Go get it now. But there's something I'm much, 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 much more excited about than the payroll protection. Idle. Go for it. Idle. Okay. So I don't know, like I always say in real estate, financing is everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that applies. I mean, you have a lot more business experience in the business world than I do, but getting financing terms, access to money um, is just everything, Yeah, everything. Cash is king. And if you can get money on good terms at a time like this, where there is blood on the streets and about to be a lot more, if you have the psychology and the money to take advantage of it, you can be one of those people who rescue the economy uh, at great financial success for yourself. So as things get to plumb down, the cascading of all these things happen and contagion around the world and all the things that are gonna happen that we know is gonna happen over the next six, 12 months, 24 months, as all these things start to come down, they go down as far as the people who are smart, prepared, or in a cash position to come in and start buying things up for pennies on the dollar. If the government is trying to create a pool of smart entrepreneurs with money in their pockets to be those people, to be the bottom. They want you to be the bottom because you reduce the how bad things get. So be one of those entrepreneurs and make yourself stupid rich at the time 
having access to one of these uh, these loans and having a, a big pile of money at incredibly generous rates at a time when you can buy things pennies on the dollar is an absolute formula for becoming rich out of this. So help your community by becoming rich. That's what you're so excited about right now. Exactly, exactly. I, not very often that you see a loan with terms like this. And I wanted to s uh, speak on one really important point uh, that we've hit a little bit, but nobody is talking about this loan, right? So the PPP, I, I said in the beginning of the presentation. Which the, we just finished and just took yeah, our PPP hat off. Our PPP hat is over there. Everything you learned, forget it for the next program, but keep going. Yeah, so the PPP, the banks make 5% on those loans. So they're trying to hustle those loans as fast as they can and get that money out as fast as they can. So let me just say that the, the government is employing the banks to be the administrative arm to get these loans out. You go and apply at a bank for these loans. The government is going to give the bank the money to loan out and oh sorry, it's going to guarantee the money they loan out and give them a 5% commission for every loan they write. They loan, loan, they loan someone $100,000, the bank makes $5,000 a pop. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. This one is being administered by the government. This one is being administered by the government. Okay, it's being administered and the administrative branch that's administering it is called the SBA. What's that stand for? The Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. The Small Business Administration, um, they're talking about even opening up local little satellite temporary offices in cities around the United States to get these loans out mm -hmm. because they they have seen for these loans 50,000 applications a day yep. when the application link was even valid. So let me back up there. Let's talk about why this loan is so sexy. The, the why behind what you can do with the money is really the important part, but let's talk about the loan terms for a minute. Um, and it is not mutually exclusive with the PPP. You can do the PPP and you can do idle. You can do them together. You cannot spend the money on the same expenses. PPP is that eight week period for payroll, okay? Idle is going to be beyond that eight, eight week period and for a lot more broad expenses. And this one is, there's no chance this will be forgiven. This is a loan, it's not gonna turn into a grant. For that reason, there's a lot less restrictions on what you can spend it on. That's right, that's but right. the loan amount that you can apply for is determined by some of your pre-existing expenses. That's right. So let's go into it a little bit. So let's talk about the terms of the loan first, okay? It's, a, it's up to a $2 million loan. Actually, I think you have another slide on this. Oh, do I? Let's finish this slide before we finish on. So as where this fits in the strategy, step one, go and get your, your free $10,000 grant. Step two, go and use, get your PPP loan, use it wisely like we say, that will turn into a grant. Don't forget to stop the bleeding, we've missed out on that step. And step three, now we go and get as much money as we can so that we can be the people who come in and support the community by buying things up when they're cheaper, but so they don't, so the prices don't fall even more. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now we're talking about loan terms. Yes. Okay, yeah. it's up to a $2 million loan. The rate is 3.75%, and this is the awesome part. It's amortized over 30 years. Yeah. So this is better than your primary residence mortgages, which are the best things, the best loans you can get, essentially. Yeah. And it's it's similar to that. Um, how we get to that $2 million is is kind of where, that's where the magic is. But there are a couple of things that are working um, in the background behind this loan right now. And that is one, on March like 28th, they rolled out a link that was a little bit of a long process. It took me a couple of hours to get through the application. Okay, it was a long, it was a long application process, um, and so many people were applying that the link and the servers all crashed. They were getting 50,000 applications a day. The servers crashed, and they said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" I called the SBA uh, that week. And I waited on hold for two and a half hours. I was number 357th in line to talk to the SBA person. Mm -hmm. And they said, we don't have any information. We know it's crashed. We're coming up with a streamlined solution. Um, okay. The next day, they sent out a letter uh, or an email to me saying, we can't deal with everyone's applications right now, but go here to this link and get your $10,000 right now and we'll get back to you. That's your ticket in line, essentially to a bigger application yes. down the line. Now this, that, which was step one that we spoke about earlier. It is step one. That was your, your free $10,000 and your ticket into this, maybe get a great loan. You guys have already done or you know how to do and you will do. Um, and so once that happened, um, they kind of just took a step back and they don't have a lot of information about this loan. So what's gonna be really, really important is to stay on top of 
uh, what the SBA is doing, what the people surrounding the bureaucracy is doing, talking to experienced SBA lenders um, who are willing to talk to you about it because they don't make any money off of it, yeah. um, and bankers that you know you have relationships with, making sure you have your ear to the to the ground here because when things move, they're going to move fast, and you got to be ready for it. Yep. If you want to get a loan with these terms, um, so what this loan is intended to pay. Uh, payables like so you know the payroll was mainly intended for payroll mm -hmm. mortgage interest rents things like that yes. this is for everything payables for everything else everything else essentially yes a and including those things but those things you're gonna use PPP for those eight weeks and then what right what happens PPP may get extended by the way it, it might we don't it, know it might we don't know if not we've got this loan as a backup yeah and it's this loan is um, you need this in addition, even if PPP gets extended, you're still going to have other expenses that you can't, you may not be able to cover because you're impacted by the coronavirus. Yep. And so this is great. So we talk about uh, fixed debt payments, payroll, accounts payable for inventory, operating expenses, contractors, um, and other bills that can't be paid because of the disaster's impact. This does um, not apply to buying capital um, assets. Yep. So you can't buy it. You can't go new out. Yeah, you can't buy a new building. You can't go buy a new forklift or whatever. Um, well, maybe you could. Ar arguably, you could. But well, well, here's the catch. Different language here. What we're talking about is when you, it says the loan is up to two million dollars. You can go and apply for a loan. In order to apply for a loan, you say you have to say, well, I need the money for this. Here's the, here's the expenses I used to have. So, and then depending on how big those expenses are, depends on how big you get the loan. Once you have the loan, I don't believe there's any limitation on what you can use the money for. Well, you just can't do it in a fraudulent way and say you're going to use it for these things and then not use it for those things. So again, if you can't take the loan and go buy a house and, you know, well, so let me put it this way. You can't take the loan, go buy a house in Puerto Rico and then stop paying the loan payments and expect not to get hammered. Yes, of course. It's a loan. You got to, you got to. Pay it back. So with regards to getting our hands on this money, we have to explain what we're going to, uh, what our bills used to be, how it's been affected, and why we need the money, why we need to borrow this money. Now, do they look at your your new reduced income post Corona, or all they're looking at is your expenses? And here, that's a really good point. They're, they're looking at your past expenses. Okay, they're not looking at post Corona because post Corona you could be post mortem for a lot of business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And so here's the thing. Now this is where you got to get into some strategy and really put your thinking hat on, right? You have your 2018 tax return, or you should. So look at that and say, okay, here's my 2018 tax return. Here's how much I have for all of these uh, payables in 2018. Now look at your 2019 or what you're going to file in your 2019 and say, huh, okay, on 2019, is it less or is it more? Could it be less or more legitimately? Um, and as you're crafting 2019, if there's no way 2019 is better than 2018, you're going to roll with 2018, yep. okay? If 2019 is... Um, it could be better mm -hmm. or it could be crafted to be better by putting things in different buckets in a legitimate way mm -hmm. then craft your 2019 tax return in a way that is going to maximize your ability to get this loan right. um, I would even go so far as to say if you had massive growth in 2019 and it, your 2020 started looking real real hot and real sexy you could even make a case based on the few first few months in 2020 but I mean, I don't know how many people that's going to apply to. I would stick to the 2018 versus 2019 strategy. Okay. Yeah. So in in this in your tax returns or your previous expenses, in order to get the most amount of money, you're looking to uh, maximize your costs. That's right. Your costs of 2019 uh, to to get the most amount of money on this line. So let's go through some of those items there. Fixed debt payments. What does that mean? It looks a little, bit, a little bit fancy term. Let's get specific on that. So just anything like that you have credit on, like any fixed debt payments. So, so not, not not necessarily your credit card, but like let's say that you bought a, I don't know, like a tractor or something, and you're paying on that, yeah. or or your mortgage. I mean, mortgage is in there as well, but anything that like you're gonna owe X amount of dollars for however long. Gotcha. All of your payroll costs, your accounts payable. That's basically inventory. Um, all your operating expenses. Now we get into credit cards. Like, yeah, my all of my expenses. Like, uh, so for your Airbnbs, for example, you have Netflix subscriptions, you have cable subscriptions, you have cleaners, you have so contractors. Contractors. All of these things would be included. Yeah. Um, this is great. gas. 
this is this is like this loan. If you are at all involved in real estate, this loan is built for you. And I mean Airbnb. I mean long term buy and hold real estate, commercial real estate, multifamily real estate. This is a great loan. Okay, and it's pretty much for everybody, I would imagine. Well, it, it is, but I'm saying it's especially for real estate. Okay. Just cool. like I said, the payroll protection is especially for restaurants. Okay. It is for everybody. Okay. What you can't use to um, lift the limit on this loan you're going for is to say that you've got you're, you're going to make a new acquisition. That's machinery, real estate, anything. That's right. Or to refinance. So you can't say like, oh, I'm getting screwed on these on this line of credit term that I have. I'm going to use this loan to pay off that line of credit. They don't want you to do that. Gotcha. It's not necessarily that you can't do that once you have the money, but you can't lie about it and you can't, they don't want you to do that. Roger that. Next slide. Okay. So here's the $2 million question. There you go. <laughs> How do I get this loan? Uh, okay, so the 10K emergency application where the, we got the 10K grant in your pocket, that is your ticket to, that is your ticket in line to apply for this loan, essentially. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna, if you watch the previous video, we're gonna email you that link about where you start. You get the $10,000 grant, you get $10,000, you get paid $10,000 to go and stand in line for this loan. And I've said this before, but unfortunately, I don't have much more information right now on April 6th, and nor does anybody else. And if they do, they're lying um, because nobody has this information. The SBA has not come out with this information. They came out with some information, and they pulled it back. And now everybody's like, where the hell did that link go? And freaking out. Don't freak out. We're all in the same boat on this, with respect to this loan. You're going to be in line, but they will get to you. Okay. Next. Uh, this is just the letter that I got um, sending saying basically that we got overwhelmed and here's $10,000 for us being overwhelmed and an easier application than the two hour one you just filled out. Awesome. Thank you, SBA. Thank you, government. Here's the bureaucracy we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so in conclusion, with respect to IDLE, let's wrap up IDLE. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a lot of information coming out on this and there are going to be uh, processes in place and w the minute that they come out, you want to know about them. You do not want to be 570 millionth in line because the money will run out. Yeah. So you need to be in the know. It is so critically important that you are. And uh, I, I, it's like every, like I stay up nights, unfortunately, looking this stuff up, like, oh my God, maybe they released it at 1 a.m. and I'm like searching for it. So it, I already have my ear to the ground on all this stuff. I've got bankers that work with me and for me and for my clients that know that the minute they hear anything, they need to be calling me and they'll do it because I've done enough work with them in the past and other deals that they want to take care of me. We have a good relationship. Um, but so I was, um, I've, in, keeping in line everybody up to date, the best way I thought we could possibly do it is to put together a Facebook group um, for people that want to know what's going on and want to know when this stuff comes down and as soon as it comes down, how to do it.